Hello everyone, welcome back. Every time I think to release a Bamboo Studio video, something crops up to interfere with the release schedule. So let's talk about the elephant in the room. There are devices that we all know and love that can be controlled by the manufacturer over the internet or the cloud. The manufacturer can literally disable the device at any time with backdoors that they have baked into the firmware. That means out of the factory, these machines are at the whim of its creator. This is a 3D printing channel, so I would be remiss to ignore that this has been bubbling up for a while now. I speak of our smartphones. Since 2008, Apple has been able to remotely remove apps directly from iPhones. Since 2014, Apple introduced a feature called Activation Lock, which is effectively a kill switch. Typically, it is introduced by the user to stop a lost or stolen phone from being used by ne'er-do-wells, but the infrastructure has been there from the beginning. Android users, you are not in the clear either, as Google has similar controls in place to locate, disable, and otherwise lock down a device. With the amount of sensors, microphones, cameras, it is a treasure trove of information on the user. This has been in place since 2010 with updates over the years. Now again, this is a 3D printing channel that dabbles in other tech-related things. I mention these first as it generally relates to the next topic that will come up. Bamboo Lab is pushing a new firmware that gives them more control over the printer you spent your hard-earned currency on. So what is it? Bamboo released a blog post that is setting Reddit, Discord, Facebook, and any social media site that allows posting and commenting on fire. I'll read a bit, then I'll go over my thoughts. So it reads as follows. Firmware update introducing new authorization control system. Uh, as part of our ongoing commitment to enhance the overall security of our products, we are introducing an authorization and authentication protection mechanism uh, for connection and control of the Bamboo Lab 3D printers. This step is significant security enhancement to ensure only authorized access and operations are permitted. Uh, this change is mitigating any risk of remote hacks, and we're going to go into that, uh, or printer exposure issues uh, that have been happening in the uh, past, and also lower the risk of ab abnormal traffic or attacks. Uh, starting January 17th, uh, users will access the beta firmware with the official release expected soon. It uh, looks like this will only affect the X uh, series uh, printer, so this is the X1, X1C, and X1E. Um, these updates will introduce uh, authorization controls that require official authorization for critical printer operations. Furthermore, unauthorized third-party software will be prohibited from executing critical operations. During this transition, we are working closely with our integration partners to ensure a smooth migration uh, to the new security framework. Uh, framework. Uh, our team will provide comprehensive documentation and support to assist with, with any uh, necessary adjustments, critical operations that require authorization. So this will be binding and unbinding the printer. So this is adding it to your account, uh, initiating remote video access, performing firmware upgrades, uh, initiating a print job uh, via LAN or cloud. This is interesting, so we're going to actually go into that. And controlling the motion system, uh, so basically controlling X, Y, and Z, uh, and Z for everyone in the U.S., <laughs> temperature, fans, AMS settings, calibrations, etc. Operations that do not require authorization, uh, the following actions will remain unaffected by the authorization mechanism. So sending status information from uh, the printer, so MQTT uh, uh, status push for tools like Home Assistant, uh, starting a a print job using SD card. So if you're in uh, offline mode, effectively just using the touchscreen, you're in good shape. And of course, general operations outside the listed authorization controls. Uh, so anything you can do from the touchscreen looks like. And uh, important information for end users, updating the firmware with authorization features. If you upgrade your printer to the latest authorization controlled firmware, you must also update Bamboo Studio and Bamboo Handy to their latest versions simultaneously. Failure to do so may result in certain uh, printer controls becoming unusable. And the old firmware option is essentially, if you don't upgrade, it looks like you're in the clear, but I don't know if this will affect the cloud stuff. So we'll, uh, we'll actually discuss that a little later. And as far as the network plugin for third-party slicer, 
Uh, so the network plugin API for the third party slicers, such as Orca Slicer, based on an open source uh, studio development, will no longer be able to utilize the studio's network plugin uh, API for author uh, authorization control. For these users, Bamboo Connect client software will act as a replacement. Uh, so it looks like when Orca sends a print job over, it actually has to go through this Bamboo Connect software. Uh, this new software removes slicing functions while enabling remote control and print initiation. So it looks like you can still create all your files and stuff within Orca, and then Orca has to pretty much ping the Bamboo Connect uh, software before it talks to your printer. And about Bamboo Connect client software, to make the experience more secure for our users, but still keep access to the printer. Using other slicers, we're providing a new tool to Bamboo Connect, which we discussed earlier. Bamboo Connect is an intuitive and efficient tool designed to seamlessly link with Bamboo Lab 3D printers. It securely trans uh, transmits sliced Bamboo Lab G code CMS files to your printer, ensuring a smooth and reliable printing experience. And it looks like this Connect is in beta and they're working on adding features. So. Uh, we advise our partners to pay close attention to the following. Please pay attention to the user restrictions outlined above for end users. Bamboo Lab will release technical information, new software, offer support to assist partners in adapting their systems, developing new software solutions compatible with the X firmware and auth uh, authorization controls for access to our technical documentation. Okay, partners can maintain downgrade the firmware version until technical upgrades are fully integrated. So it looks like if you do upgrade, you should be able to downgrade. I don't know how long they're going to keep that, but if you don't like it, it looks like you can go back according to this. Now, anyone that's using Orca Slicer, uh, if you can be using X Series 3D printers with the older firmware, version which does not include authorization features uh, if you choose to upgrade to the firmware uh, version with authorization features you must download and install bamboo connect printer control software from the official website after installation you can basically exploit slice 3ms so you can looks like you can just take the 3ms files that you created in orca and then take it in or bring it into the bamboo connect software and information for third-party uh, software, hardware accessories. So to control your X-series printers using third-party software or hardware accessories, is recommended to keep your printer on the older firmware without authorization features. Upgrading the firmware will prevent third-party software or hardware from controlling your printer. So anyone with the uh, BQ Touch or the Panda Touch uh, won't work. And if you upgrade your firmware with authorization features, you also uh, you only be able to monitor the progress and status. So effectively, you'll still get the information on what's going on, you just won't be able to stop a print job, it looks like, uh, or start one. And future implications, all Bamboo Lab uh, printer models will integrate all uh, authorization control technology as a standard to ensure the highest level of security, uh, highest levels of user security and printer protection moving forward. We acknowledge that these changes may introduce additional effort and workload. However, through our joint efforts and cooperation, we believe we can improve the security, quality, and user experience of the Bamboo Lab 3D printers and some more information. Uh, so why the change is needed. Uh, the security update is necessary to enhance the overall security of your printer by ensuring that all interaction with the hardware, such as moving axis, heating components, or performing other critical actions are verified and secure. We can minimize risk and prevent uh, potentially dangerous situations. Additionally, over the past year, we've detected an increased number of requests made to our cloud services through unofficial channels. These incidents have included significant abnormal traffic patterns, and in some cases targeted DDoS attacks that have impacted service availability. Our monitoring systems have detected peaks up to 30 million unauthorized requests per day, creating unnecessary strain on our infrastructure. Uh, why does, uh, does this need to be enabled in LAN uh, mode as well? One of the key points, and this is the one I'm curious about, one of the key points of this security upgrade lies in the improvement of the network security capabilities on the printer side. The printer's LAN mode is a working mode we defined in which the printer does not connect to the cloud service, and I can verify this, and usually only client software in the same local area network can access the printer. However, please note that even when the printer is in LAN mode, uh, the network environment in which the printer is located may still be connected to the public network and other malicious software may uh, may still be able to remotely access the printer. In addition, other network devices or software on the knuckle network may not be secure, such as a Trojan horse software or other backdoor software, which may run on computers or handheld devices or may also run in embedded devices. In above two cases, the printer may still be attacked from the outside or even remotely. 3D printers have complex moving parts, heating elements that pose a high risk if unauthorized people with ill intentions gain access to them. The results of such unauthorized access can be severe, and we take safety very seriously. To avoid the printer being in an unknown situation, we uniformly manage the authorization and control of all accesses uh, to avoid potential risk. 
Does this mean I won't be able to use Orca Slicer in the future? Bamboo Connect uh, enables integration with third-party software such as Orca Slicer by using the file transfer method shared in the wiki. Before announcing this change publicly, we shared with the lead Orca Slicer developers to ensure alignment and collaboration moving forward. We remain committed to working closely with them and other partners to facilitate an integration of Connect software, creating a smooth and hassle-free experience for all users. We previously highlighted these upcoming changes in an earlier blog post where we clarified that we cannot guarantee long-term support for aftermarket software or hardware that interacts with the printer or teething elements. Our team is actively working on submitting the integration code for Bamboo Connect. Once submitted, it will be up to Orca to decide uh, when and if to incorporate it into the slicer, enhancing the user experience. We anticipate the code to be available on GitHub within the next few days, uh, ready for integration into the Orca code base. Uh, what happens if I get my Bamboo account? Um, it doesn't affect that. Uh, I'll actually sort of blow past these and then we can actually get into my thoughts. Now, my thoughts. I am actually not too miffed about this. I've used my printer on the cloud, outside the cloud with LAN only and SD card. There was a lot said and some things that was ignored by some folks. It appears Bamboo Lab cloud servers may be getting hammered or even outright attacked. DDoS or distributed denial of service attacks is basically a flood of traffic used to overwhelm a website or service. Major companies have been targeted in such a manner, so you can imagine a smaller one dealing with the excess traffics. The 30 million requests in a day, alongside other items mentioned, may have been the last straw in security for them. Ironically enough, this isn't the first time they blocked a service from lighting up their servers with requests, but this is a much bigger reaction. So I have a few obvious reasons why they are doing this. They have a large influx of users and keeping the software, hardware, and firmware streamlined is best for the average user. Be it from a standpoint of support, but also reliability as well. Power users are rightfully upset, especially if you use third-party items like Panda Touch or Orca Slicer to control the printer. Now think about this. We are running printers that can get to oven temperatures. A build plate that can hit 110C or a nozzle that can go to 300C, a malicious actor could potentially have the printer move a nozzle at 2Gs or 45 miles per hour into the side of the printer or the front glass. If they are seeing odd traffic that is sending insane commands, I would expect them to do something to mitigate that. Let's not forget, this company also recalled, replaced, and otherwise delayed an entire product line due to a potential safety issue. I will not downplay any company who takes safety and security to the forefront. Since I am a Kickstarter backer, they have been tightening safety controls since the beginning, and this would be from August 2022. Now, other potential issues I can see border on conspiracy. Their next printer is probably going to be a banger for print farms, and they want to lock down those into a subscription or maybe even an in-house solution. Control and management systems all in one central location. Also, they could be preparing for any issues with the lawsuit with Stratasys to comply with any court orders or settlements that stem from it. Where does that leave us? For folks who do not update, it is business as usual, or until they block you from uploading to the cloud service. Land only folks, or those who print from SD card or push files via FTP are fine. Anyone who runs custom firmware such as the X1 Plus are in the clear for now Again, as long as Bamboo Lab doesn't block them from the cloud portion, or they can just print locally. If you're using Bamboo Studio, which I venture to guess most folks are, again, business as usual. If you are using Orca Slicer and just using it to print, not a big deal as long as Soft Fever uh, implements the Bamboo Connect into the workflow. Uh, but it does look like you cannot control the printer from Orca Slicer directly unless there's some sort of workaround. I am curious about one thing, and that is the LAN only mode. It appears the LAN only mode has to check in with the Bamboo servers, which I'm wondering how it would work if the servers are down. I read and reread the uh, blog post, but I'm still unsure how that's supposed to work. I'm still trying to wrap my head around why the change to the LAN only mode. 
But again, I assume that if there's any controls via the LAN, then there could be controls via an outside party, in which case you're running into the same issues. I mean, I get it. I don't have to agree with it, but I get it. What is the print shop doing? I'm holding off any updates, not for fear of these changes specifically. First, I tend not to install firmware updates when they first release. Second, the company typically goes on holiday for nearly a month for the Chinese New Year, so any issues will either not be addressed or handled slowly. Third, I see no advantages to the firmware for me personally. I rarely use Orca Slicer, and the question about LAN only mode has not been answered. For users of my channel, there are already solutions for you. Do not update. If you fear the cloud portions, just follow some simple steps, which I released over a year ago. You can break free from the Bamboo Cloud and retain most features, and you can even access the memory card over local FTP. Now, if you're wondering if I'm truly concerned about privacy in the traditional sense, I'm leaning towards no. Think about it for a moment. Bamboo Lab has my government name, email, mailing address, even credit card on file. I frequently interact with the Bamboo Forum, Bamboo websites like Maker World, and to buy parts. I use their cell phone app and software. I do monitor my network traffic, and I have been for years. Nothing of note has been found. If I do not have some level of trust by now, would I even be interacting with this company? I started this video talking about a cloud-connected device that has a camera, microphone, admin rights to remove apps, even disable itself if the manufacturer wishes. I have been carrying those devices for 17 years. Finding out a printer I have been using for two years may get similar features, but not the exact controls aren't pushing my blood pressure any higher. I'm closer to a power user than an average user, so my initial reaction was one of frustration. However, after thinking who these printers are targeted to, how Bamboo Lab single-handedly jump-started competition between the brands after years of stagnation. I'm putting down the torches and the pitchforks, just like I did with my cell phone, Windows computers, smart speakers, and other smart devices. Thank you very much for listening to me ramble. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments.